this group on this vessel, we are the first people to see this specific place. It's a little bit like being one of those early explorers, when you had a white map of the world and you could go there and you could sort of say, well, this is something that nobody have ever seen before. My name is Anne-Helene Tandberg and I am a crustacean taxonomist. A born ocean explorer, I am going to study some places from an expedition 150 years ago. The historic expedition that I want to sort of follow in the footsteps of, or ship steps of maybe, was called the Norwegian North Sea Expedition. In Norwegian that would be the Norske Nordhavs Expedition. The Norwegian North Sea Expedition was the first scientific exploration of what we today call the Norwegian Sea. This expedition started in the south, so right outside of Bergen, and it ended north of Svalbard. They spent three summers in 1876, 1877 and 1878. They studied how deep the ocean was at different places, how cold or warm the water was and how fast the water currents moved. And they studied the zoology of the area. And so it's really much the beginning of science at what now is the University of Bergen. At the time when this expedition started, most people didn't know anything about the deep sea. And a very few researchers knew that there would be life in the deep sea and this was a thing that was not really agreed upon just 30 or 40 years before this expedition. At that time people thought that everything below 500 fathoms was a dead area. Nothing could live there. Then the next 20-30 years more researchers started to investigate the deep sea. So the methods that these people used 150 years ago were very different from what we can do today, especially how we do it on this expedition. This vessel has some really cool ways of looking down into the ocean, which obviously people couldn't do before. They used dredges and trolls, nets that you sort of hang out behind the boat with a long rope so that it reaches down to the seafloor. Just a couple of hours before they would deploy their nets, they would find out how deep it was for the first time and then they would just plop down the net, pull for a couple of hours and see what was there. So in a way it was sampling very blind. Now using this vessel we can send down an ROV or we can send down a sub where we can sit inside and look so we're not blind anymore. I'm really amazed with how many things that they found using such simple equipment. 150 years ago what they did was making beautiful drawings. Now we can have film of all we did when we sampled and we can take photographs of the animals when they come up and are still alive. In addition to looking at what the animal looks like, we can also look at the genetics, the DNA. The sequencing of specimens from museum collections together with sequencing things that are brought into museum collections now are making all that material that is there even more available to modern science. Specimens from, from the old expedition are still used quite a lot. I looked at specimens from this expedition when I did my PhD. I study tiny crustaceans that live on the seafloor. The group that I love the most is called amphipods. Many of the species that I'm working with now, nobody knew that they existed before this expedition. And some of them nobody have seen since the expedition. Right now, we are at the station that was visited in 1876 on the 30th of June. After that I don't think anybody has been here and now we see some of the species that they saw. Amphipods! <laughs> These are um, 
scavenging um, animals and I would say they are almost like the um, renovation workers of the ocean. Uh, they eat whatever is dead until there isn't much left. There was a lot more life than it seems, right? So when you zoom in a little bit on, on that sediment, it's all of a sudden teeming with life and it, it looks very barren and there are some black sticks sticking out of it. And then when you look more, there is all these different things living on it. And that, I think that's just amazing. The station that we're visiting today is a place where a lot of species were described for the first time. They had what we call type locality. Type locality is when a species is described scientifically, you need to tell where you first found it. And that needs to be written down in the publication that describes that species. One of the species that had the type locality from the station we visited is a species that I have been specifically working with the last year. The type specimens, the first specimen that were used for the description have been lost. We need to find something back from the exact same spot where they first found it. And I did find one specimen. So this is a specimen. It is uh, Halirages quadricuspis, and that is an amphipod. Since we collected it with the very nice ROV, it still has all its long legs and antennae. And that never happens if you take it up with um, a troll. These sites that we are visiting right now have never been visited with this kind of equipment before. So nobody have been down with either human eyes in the sub or eyes from an ROV to see what it looks like down here. And I think also seeing things in general gives you a better appreciation for the entire system. And I would wish that more people could be able to see because I think the deep sea is so beautiful, I want to share it. One of the reasons why we should visit the sites from the Norwegian North Sea Expedition right now is that the world is changing very rapidly and we will not be able to say anything about nature today unless we understand how nature has changed. Learning about history can also learn to predict a little bit what will happen with different scenarios in the future. So it's not just understanding what has been, but preparing for what might come. I am hoping that the work that I am doing here now this week will remind people about the Norwegian North Sea Expedition. I think if anybody look back at my work in 150 years time from now, I hope they will say, ooh, cool animals, I also want to look at amphipods. And it would also be very, very nice to be part of a group of people who could inspire new generations to continue with learning about the biodiversity of the sea.